Hi, I'm Jameson Newlander, Alan Frog from The Lost Boys, and you're watching the Frog Brothers Podcast. Let me get a it's refreshment time, folks. I'm just going to go watch a movie. Do you like scary movies? I don't watch movies. I have to return some videotapes. You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. I don't need a TV. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. Over 1,600 titles, each for rent at just $2 the first night, and only a... I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? It's a laser disc. Okay, I want channels 18, 24, 63, 987, and Welcome to the Fog Brothers Podcast with your hosts, Justin and Alec. All right, ever, uh, welcome to the Frog Brothers Podcast. Um, we have a special guest today. Uh, you want to introduce? Yeah, Laura Summer here. You may know her from things such as The Real Ghostbusters as the voice of Janine, the original Janine, our favorite Janine, uh, The Garfield <laughs> Show, uh, Hello Kitty, and one of your longest running series you've done is the Digimon franchise as Patamon. So very uh, happy to have you here joining us today. Hi, guys. Uh, so we're going to just have a little chat with uh, Laura today and... Uh, so thanks for listening, guys. Um, you want to start off with, uh, I think we got some notes over here for you. Yeah. So, you know, I noticed you've done some live roles before you got into voice acting. So what was your original plan with that? And how did you transition over to primarily doing voice roles? Oh, um, well, it wasn't, nothing's a plan. I mean, I didn't even know what voiceovers were. And I, uh, I started working in New York in theater and uh, then I got from that and then I got into commercials. So I did a lot of on-camera commercials, hmm. like a lot. And, um, and then I got some attention from the commercials to come out to California and I thought I'd go out to California. So then I started auditioning for things and got on some sitcoms and then I went back to New York and then uh they were talking about a spinoff of a of facts of life, you know, was going to do another show and blah, blah, blah. And that's sort of just how it rolls, you know. Um, it, it's not really a plan. Sure. <laughs> and then yeah. I got into voice and I, um, I really loved it. And um, then I really took a turn. I did a lot of production work and movies. Um, pre-production and so I would still do ADR and uh on movies and tv shows and stuff like that and that you don't have to audition for it all so I really like that mm. and um is that a, did I answer your question so that's what happened yeah, yeah. I mean, now I, I just like and then um yeah <laughs> it wasn't that's a awesome. plan I didn't well it's like there's a I don't know the, the art of a voice actor is a little different than it used to be. I would say, you know, so many of the big films now always just try to aim for a list talent, but I think there's just something so magical about not having, having that. Uh, I think the art of, voice like that yeah. you go, Oh, uh, that's uh, Keanu Reeves doing it or, or, you know, Brad Pitt doing the voice, you know, uh, I think there is something different. I mean, I, I I don't know, you know, the pendulum swings a lot in show business and, um, you know, there what could be, you know, like during the pandemic, it, everything was very kind of, uh, all the commercials, you could hear it in the commercials. The commercials sure. are kind of like more down and like, you know, in these times and very compassionate and caring instead of that, like, you know, hey, good golly, Miss Molly, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In my past. So I think that's pretty interesting. You said you do a lot of ADR. So I had the opportunity to see Tom Kane. You know, he's a he's a local to us here in the Kansas City area, which was where we're at. And uh, I sat through one of his sessions before and he talked about doing ADR and how a lot of the times he would do 
voice work for other actors and just kind of fill in for somebody that may not have been available, you know, just since he could do so many impersonations. Is that well, what a lot of your ADR is or is it just kind yeah. of harder? what's it like? <laughs> I don't, I have done, you know, when he meet or I, I don't think it's, yeah, sometimes they'll have like, um, uh, let's say it's Brad Pitt, let's, you know, my Brad Pitt or something, and there'll be a, a, a movie version of a movie, but then they'll be for the airlines because they don't allow certain words and. Oh, sure. Uh, okay. So somebody will have to, and he might not be available or not want to do it or. Uh, so they come in and they do their breaths and they might have to change a word or two. So they're not really, Im they're imitating the, uh, they're a sound alike and they're imitating the person for, let's say a cleaner line, you know, sure. if it was yeah, that makes sense. And, and that kind of stuff. So I have done some of that, but it's more, um, it's all the people that you see next to the leads in a scene, let's say in a restaurant talking and, you know, let's say they're in a, a baseball game. It's all the people in the stands, all that noise has to be, that's all done by actors. And then there's, uh, you know, uh, dubbing, which is, that's like far, you know, there's so many aspects yeah. now of the voice business so his adr he, he that might be his specialty you know i don't sure. know him okay <clears throat> just wasn't sure if you did i mean i know that's a small kind of world and he's had some influence and overlap with everyone else but uh well not me i don't <laughs> yeah. know him i guess i you know does he live in kansas city yeah he does he's done yeah. uh he's done a bunch of stuff for lucasfilm and star wars and things like that so yeah see i've never done any of those kinds of things so uh -huh. you know i work a lot for disney and disney plus and uh i used to do a lot of stuff for abc family so you know and if there's only four when i if there's maybe four people working with you two girls two guys i mean it's very, mm -hmm. very small for the tv for those movies that sometimes they'll get a lot more people involved, sure you know so you've done a wide variety of voice roles, um, and everyone here has probably heard you at something, whether or not they knew it, obviously based on your resume on your website, which is lovethatlaura.com, if someone's trying to book you for anything or just get to know you a little bit better. Um, but what's the strangest role you've ever done? Um, well, I did a lot of what they used to call tootsies, and I'm amusing that because I listen to sometimes Broadway um, stuff in the car you know it's, it's like a station a broadway station and they were playing something from this song and i heard this girl in the song and it was i guess there was a on uh, broadway there was a musical version of the film tootsie which i never knew and and this girl was just talking all like this and she was doing the role of sandy as a music and it's the the actress and it was all these show business references that were really funny and in answer to your question, I would say way back when, when I did a lot of those tootsies, those dumb blonde parts and things like that, um, I had to roller skate and, and do what was stunt work, fall. And I didn't know any better to go, hey, I need some knee pads or something on my butt, you know, because I kept falling on cement. And uh, I was carried away by these crazy guards who were like... Uh, you know, all these piercings and tattoos. And so I guess that was pretty, that comes to mind. Well, that sounds kind of like a wild experience for sure. Nice. Yeah. Definitely memorable. <laughs> yeah. And so when you don't, you don't know any better, you go, they say, oh, can you fall on the roller skates over here and then fall over here? Oh yeah, sure. I could do that. <laughs> well, we're glad you made it out of there in one piece. Cause That's that, could, right. that could have been some long chiropractic there. visits later. Yeah. <laughs> How did you um, come to the role of Janine at first? Like, what was your, how did you first hear about that? Oh, I called up an agent that I knew in New York who was out here. And he said, come on in. And I came in and he called me like the, like, the next day and sent, said, go over here and read for this. And I guess they had been, reading a lot of people and they gave me a monologue to read and I read it nothing like the Janine we know and love mm -hmm. just sort of normal sweet um 
they, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what Ghostbusters was uh, really. I mean, I knew it was a movie, had been a movie, but you know, it was, it didn't, nothing, I didn't know. Yeah. And uh, then they said, oh, you got 65 episodes. Cause that's, was the original, uh, the original um, buy, I guess. Yeah, sure. And, uh, so that's how it happened. And then the first day of recording, uh, they were like trying to figure out stuff. And and they said to me, can you do a New York accent? And then I said, oh, yeah, sure. So, you know, I guess it sounded a little, I guess, you know, at first they weren't thinking they were going to go that way. And then they thought, well, I take all the fun out of it. And then I guess they decided to take the fun out of it again. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So if you had the chance to revisit Ghostbusters now, I mean, obviously there's the sequel out, but you know how that works, right? You know, there's a, there was okay. a couple of years ago of an animated movie. And then there's obviously always talks of a, an animated series once you have a movie like this coming out. So is that something you'd go back to if they offered it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I, it's, it's not like, you know, um, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. We'd love to have that happen we're all i hear of- you know fans talk about it but i don't hear i haven't heard anything in the ether about you know or they say oh we're getting a petition or you know <laughs> no I, yeah. I hear that kind of stuff but i don't like know of anything um yeah. and they might want to audition all the janines i don't know <laughs> right. sure. yeah a few all. years ago they definitely were talking more about like i haven't i haven't actually mentioned an animated movie at one point but this was like closer to the 2016 so Ooh. lately there has bringing the lately, series, they're bringing back so many shows you yeah know, everything old is new again right oh yeah absolutely yeah I'm Catching out vitamins. Out. Uh, guys i'm swallowing i mean i don't want you to think i'm taking drugs oh. <laughs> you're good Podcast. we don't judge <laughs> you have so, a great set the guys have a great set no oh, thank you thanks so how do you feel about the Ghostbusters community? It sounds like a lot of us reach out to you and just kind of have a general interest. Is that your biggest fan base that reaches out and um, connects? Well, I, I, I always avoided the fan base, you know, like, uh, like not, avo- like I just didn't even know it was there. You know what I mean? And sure. yeah. I would get stuff, but um, I wasn't into social media really. And I didn't really get that. It w- I thought it was just a, a fad mm-hmm. and I'm k- kind of shy. So I didn't like people saying, Oh, I loved you. And I like, I hadn't thought about, y- you don't think about the jobs you did years ago. I mean, right. you have to be in the present. Right. And um, so, but once I, you know, and I would, some, somebody would track me down or it would go to my, I mean, um, manager or a lawyer or, you know, that would somehow get to me, but I wasn't like, like now I'm on Twitter a lot with the fans. It's really fun. It's nice. Uh, there's a lot of kids who are like uh, discovering Ghostbusters for the first time. I mean, you know, or, th- yeah. or people guys in there uh 30s and they're showing it to their five-year-olds you know? yep that's me i've got that's a four good. and a six-year-old so yeah they, they <laughs> oh, love the okay. real poster, so and the kids yeah. love it the little oh, yeah. they're just because uh what do you think that is it's just that appeal of it's it's just a, such a unique thing because it's people working together right and they're not fighting other people they're fighting ghosts and i think that really makes a big difference in how people respond to it you know, when you try to break it down from a psychological standpoint, I think that's really what it is. There's so much conflict elsewhere that if you can constantly be the hero, because Ghostbusters are always the hero, right? Right. And I, th- I think that's more relatable. And it's, the you colors, know, colors are fun, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, the colors I mean, are fun. The gadgets are fun. And they're not guns or anything like that. So it's a little bit more comfortable for people to watch without. It's just spooky enough to be fun and not terribly frightening either too yeah i think it's just a real special yeah. niche market for that so interesting interesting because people will say uh oh the best line you ever did was this or this and i'm like huh I don't, I, you know and now i have seen because they were running it or or somebody will send it to me a clip so of course i would you know uh, oh when i said hey you guys blah blah because i didn't even remember how i talked you know like uh obviously I don't talk like that. And, um, so I, when I first did like a, 
uh, they reached out to me. Actually, I reached out to them. These the the Ghostbusters of uh, of I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> they're in Scotland, <laughs> but there. And I because I said, oh, I heard you're doing a convention, and the, the guy told me his his jaw like hit the floor. He was like, would you come to Scotland? Because I was supposed to go two years ago. The pandemic, you know, it was set up two years ago for that summer, and then it's been moved now till next year. And but I had they they said, would you come for a day? And I thought, oh well, I could, I could. I know I'm rambling around. It's just so. Oh, you're oh, fine. You're good. Yeah, it's all fine. Oh, okay. We were um, going to talk about the cons, so. And and uh, yeah, so so um, they they said, well, uh, it would be a Ghostbusters day, and I thought. Well, I can do a day because it always seemed kind of like I don't like to brag and I felt like I was boasting. It felt I grew up in a different generation. So it just felt weird to talk about myself or to talk about something I did. The first cartoon I ever auditioned for was Ghostbusters. Hmm. And um, so uh, it just but now I like it. And um <laughs> <laughs> now I wish I had done the whole series. <laughs> um, so do you have you done any conventions then or is that like the first one you're really aiming to go for and give it a shot? I have done a few as a as a guest panel, like where I just came in for a couple hours, you know, like as part of like cartoon voices, like the the Comic Con in San Diego. I've done hmm. that. But I was as a fit like a favor to the director or Mark Evanier, who I was doing Garfield for, was huh. on the Garfield show for like five years. And so he does a lot of panels there. So I, I've done it a couple of times for him. And I always got so shy. Uh, I don't think, I think now I get it, you know, that you have to, you know, people, that's what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And one time I went uh, to um, Michael, who was, you know, the head writer, producer of, um, you probably know him. Um, <laughs> I'm blanking out on his last name. It's not Stravinsky, but it's like that. Hmm. He, he's the story editor and uh, of Ghostbusters. Yep. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. You know I mean, and, no, and I'm not going to butcher his name. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Right. Okay, edit that out. No, <laughs> And so I, he was doing some kind of panel and talk and I was there and I was, people were going up to the mic and I knew I could go up there and go, hello, Ghostbusters, you know, and everybody would go crazy, but, you know, and I don't even know that he would recognize me. It was like, you know, a few years ago and it was so, it was so many years after and I was kind of a kid when I did that. I mean, that's how I think of myself. And um, but I didn't do it because I just felt like, oh, my God, that's so showy. But now I can show off and now I'm proud of it and, you know, bring it on. But yeah. uh, Scotland sounded good. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that'd be a nice trip. Like, oh, I can go travel overseas and do a little yeah. bit while I'm there, too. All right. Yeah, yeah Business, exactly. pleasure, you know. Exactly. And, and, and then, then I started getting a lot of invitations with the, when the pan, we, the virus the, when first came to be and people around uh, like a whole Digimon thing, there was like all these Digimon panels and they were trying to get like just the Digimon people and these conventions and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But then it became very iffy about, you know, traveling and we didn't know what we were dealing with. And right. so you know, and now I'm in my closet a lot recording. <laughs> and much like us, yeah, we both went to school for audio engineering. So we've both got little home studio sets up besides oh, this. So cool. it's yeah. always fun wow. to see what other people use to record with and all those things. So, oh, wow. So you could record my auditions and edit them for me and send them back to me. Yeah. Yep. We have the technology. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> um, well, the, well, I was going to say, do you have a dream role that you haven't been able to do yet or something that like you've envisioned that just hasn't landed your way, but you, you'd love to do? Uh, you no, know, because I it's so funny. I didn't I, I was doing a lot of ADR for a long time and I still do it. And um, so I wasn't thinking I like the anonymity of it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm remembering, oh, I used to do this. What can I do? I don't know. I guess just to do, um, it would be a blast to do something like 
Ghostbusters it doesn't have to be Ghostbusters, but that was such a, I mean, like Lorenzo music, he's not with us huh. anymore. And the people were so great. And I've worked with Frank Welker since then many times. I've seen Maurice LaMarche. Um, but I didn't even know what it was. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like you're doing it to picture. Yeah. And you're so ahead of the time when you're doing the voice work for that, that by the time they animate it and release it, right? I imagine there's yeah, it, well, it wasn't as long as like a movie, like they'll work on something for DreamWorks for six years. It wasn't like that. It would be like, I mean, I was recording when it was airing on Saturdays and I remember watching a couple of times, oh, there's my name. But it's like I had done a lot of on camera and a lot of commercials. So I was used to seeing myself on TV. So the like waiting for my lines or watching it, it just it wasn't even, oh, I did it. Okay, I don't want to think about it. Like, I don't want to think about how I look. I don't want to think about how I sound. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that everyone that does voice work struggles with, right? Before we started podcasting, it was like, you hear your voice recorded back, you're like, oh, I don't know if I like the way I sound. And now just exactly, you hear it back, right? you're, just, you're just so used to it. It's so natural that it feels normal and comfortable that yeah. you get there, so. Exactly. Exactly. And I was so surprised that I had such a character voice. I mean, especially then I sounded younger. So, um, I mean, I could do that now. I mean, I could, I could, but I definitely talked higher, you know, I definitely talked higher and I, I don't think I had a New York accent, but I might've, I mean, I grew, had one growing up. I must've, because my mother talks like that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fun though to see those influences so as a kid did you just do weird wild voices at all or is this just not really no but people I remember we had a neighbor who was a musician and he um that was his like love and he you know played music I think on the weekends like he was a saxophone player and he worked in the mark stock market during the day and he would say oh my god her voice her voice and he meant my speaking voice he wasn't talking about my singing hmm. and um he would always comment that voice it's so and I don't even know what it you know I was like 12 13 I, I don't even know what he was hearing but I guess it was unique interesting yeah and unique and comfortable right you know hearing your your normal talking voice now it's it's just a very natural soothing tone right it's not like over the top or anything like that so i think that he's probably feeling that even then right and then that confidence just in your talking i think goes a long way too oh well thank you well i th i think i sounded you know it was you know younger like but but um i know so that's why when i read this stuff about oh they they wanted janine not voice not to be harsh and i'm thinking uh it wasn't told to me exactly that way and and i don't really know the truth what the truth is you know mm -hmm. but it certainly wasn't anything since i got cast just being just hello ghostbusters please hold i mean literally they sent me the cassette cassette and i have it somewhere and i I heard it because they said we're going to voice match that, which they, of course, didn't end up doing. They We ended up doing something else, but I already had the job, you know? I'm so sure. Yeah. That's fun, though. So you that was your first series and you started out with, I mean, obviously a legendary talent on that show, just the, the co-workers you had. Were you guys all recording in like the same room or in the, yeah. at the same time so you could really vibe yeah. off each other and do that? Okay. Yeah, and the first show uh took eight hours and uh i remember lorenzo saying to me it's not like this and i was like huh okay well i didn't know anything differently but the they did fire the original director i think he did the pilot and you know uh or maybe a couple episodes and uh mm. then they had uh that's what took so long and once once uh, Marsha Goodman took over, the shows would be, you know, done in a couple hours. Interesting. Yeah. And we were all together, you know. Yeah. And sometimes we do two shows at once, but you didn't get the scripts in advance, really. Mm. Oh, OK. That makes sense, especially at the time. But right. I, mean, I guess that's one of the biggest things that's changed now is, you know, voice work you can easily do from home compared to uh you know being in the room with somebody so and having to have a dedicated audio engineer all the time so 
what has that been like over the years changing with that as, as it's gone from in a studio to being more freelance or just more flexible, really? Well, the, anim, you know, I think animation, they still would like people to be in the same room. Mm-hmm. If something that happens, you know, I mean, when we were all in lockdown, I know they sent kits out to people on series. They said, so they, everybody would have the same microphone mm-hmm. and they did it like that. Mm-hmm. And when I do jobs now, it's usually like a hook on to a studio's clean feed or source connect. It's not my own, you know, and okay. so that's the engineers doing the heavy lifting, but it's weird not seeing the people. It is just, even for ADR, which is way more anonymous and it's not a timing issue so much or comedy, you know, like mm-hmm. um, it's better to be in the room. Yeah. I mean, but but the work uh, you're, it, bleh, uh, a lot of things can be done from home, like dubbing or you know um, into commercials or whatever things like that. But you know, I'd I, I'd rather just think about my acting. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I uh, I'm a member of one of those uh, small little voice acting websites, you know, like uh, Voice dot com. Right. <laughs> you can you can. I know exactly. Yeah. What you, wait, my timer just went off. Can I go shut the timer off? Yeah, go for it. Okay, because it's going to keep beeping. I imagine she's making cookies. Janine making cookies. Hi there. It's my timer for the dryer. Oh and God! No. More minutes. So, uh, so oh, voices.com and voices one two three. Yeah, I um, I uh, I I keep getting things to do like um audition for stuff, but some of it's like uh, with crazy accents or like it'll be very much uh, an ethnicity that I am not. So it's like stuff. Oh, like, I think oh. you change. I, I'm not on those sites, the pay to play. But yeah. can't you change the the thing so you don't yeah i i i definitely have it listed what i can do and there's a vocal sample and everything that you can listen to it's like i literally just recreated the uh commercial from ghostbusters you know where they're oh, wow. strange <laughs> voices in the middle of the night and all that stuff but um i just was saying yeah i know how it is like recording at home is is very much a big thing at least in that regards and that's a lot of that stuff is just smaller stuff for commercials or oh yeah but i know people who've stuff. gotten big jobs from like yeah. voices voice one, two, three and stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot of non-union and, and all, but you know, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. And the business has certainly changed. Um, and I heard somebody say that who would have thought that voice actors would be the cockroaches of show business because they managed to keep working through the, and find their way through the pandemic. So I don't know how I feel about that, but, uh, (laughs) Well, I guess if they were referring to your survival instincts and your ability to thrive in an otherwise less than ideal situation, then yeah, that's just not a very kind way to call well, with that kind of talent. You know, New Yorkers have a love hate with cockroaches. I mean, everybody's um, seen one, and out here they call in California they call it water bugs, but I think they're the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. So, what is the most uh, rewarding part of voice work, in your opinion, for you at least? Uh, rewarding. You mean like residuals? <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously money doesn't hurt, but yeah. yeah, it's a great way to make a living, but it wasn't like I went, Oh, I'm going to pursue. Vo-. I mean, I know people do that now and you know, um, I'm trying, I, I definitely feel like I've diversified this last year, you know, being able to record from home and, um, doing some different kinds of things, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of rewarding. And sometimes singing on cartoons has been really fun. Um, it's, were were you a musician before you've done any singing? uh, I I did grew, uh, I did Greece. I did a couple of tours of Greece, um, with the Broadway cast and there were big packages and, um, but then I sort of stopped singing and then I would sing if they asked, you know, can, can you sing? I'd say, sure. You know, a lot of times there's always a song, 
<laughs> they throw in a yeah. song, not in Ghostbusters, but yeah. in in other in other things I've done, and um, and I would sing, and then I started to get really um, shy about singing too. And so I, it's funny, I just went back to voice class, and I'm singing away in my house, <laughs> so I'm ready. Mm -hmm. well, awesome. <laughs> there you go. Do you have any exciting new projects coming out you want to talk about? Oh, let's see. Um, well, I'm working on a show it, that, that your fan, I don't know if your fans, because it's a Disney Plus show, but I am doing voice work on Secrets of Sulphur Springs, which I did the first season and now we're into the second season. And it's a kind of a cool show because we uh, they time travel in the show. So it takes place in the 1930s and 1960s and then present day in Louisiana. So uh, since you're improvising a lot when you do uh, ADR and you're making up the dialogue, you have to know the time period a bit. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. And I'm allowed to talk about that, I guess. That's awesome. Well, yeah, that sounds like it's a blast. Yeah, let's check do you do a little out. research then when you're kind of setting yourself up or do they send that yeah. to you as part of the- No, you have to do everything yourself. Okay. Yeah. It's probably funner, I think though. Yeah, kind of get in there and- you, know, you can kind of pick and choose what you find most interesting. Yeah, I mean, like there was a guy who came on and he started saying things like groovy and, you know, things from the 1960s, but it, he was in the wrong 1960s. It's this is like 1961 and two. And um, mm -hmm. he was saying like, hey, my vibe, like all of a sudden he was a stoner. <laughs> and, so, mm -hmm. and, and so I said, well, wait, when does this show take place? Because I didn't, you know, you're not right. seeing the other actors. So, you know, you don't want to point out anything to anybody like, oh, you need to do it because he was he had never done it before. He was a different. Yeah. They had brought in another guy and um, oh, it's like 1961 and two. It's just going to be a different. It was very genteel. You know, everybody's talking about, you know, way more mundane things. <laughs> yeah. The beginning of the 60s is quite drastically different than the end. So. <laughs> <laughs> So do you get recognized when you're out on the street? Do people recognize you? As not, any, not now, no. But I did, I have gone through that when I used to do a lot of commercials. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that people would recognize me or they'd go, are you an actor? Well, they didn't used to call, now they call you an actor. They used to say, yeah. are you an actress? And yeah. But I live in LA. So everybody's, nobody would be, everybody's too cool to say, you know, do I know you? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Funny. So what, uh, what would you say if you could do any kind of a song or anything like that, you've done some singing. So have you thought about doing like a musical or anything like that? Or have you done any producing of any of your own projects? Um, I, I have sung before I, and I will sing again. And, uh, we're just, I mean, it is still, there is still definitely a pandemic here. Like my girlfriend yeah. got an yeah. acting job and she went to, I think, Warner Brothers and she had to get tested 48 hours before. Then she had to get tested that day. Then yeah. she did the job and this was an on-camera job. And then she said two days later, she got a call that there was an outbreak on the set and she had to go for another COVID test. And then another one to make sure, you know, um, so it's definitely not back to normal here yeah, yet. Yeah. For sure. So I don't know what it's going to uh, be. You know, I know uh, I, I don't and I don't know what, you know, some people's comfort level is different than other people. I mean, I'm really careful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we've still been having to be We're pretty careful very around very here. Close to each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are brothers, so <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not just a clever title. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is clever, but I didn't. I never. You know, a lot of people they in 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 New York there were always like many many Greek coffee shops, and it was always two brothers, four brothers, six brothers, eight brothers. You know, that's what the names were always called. Mm -hmm. It was I don't know if they exist anymore, the Greek coffee shops, but there was a ton of them, <laughs> the brothers. All right. Well, um, thank you for coming on with us tonight. You're very welcome. This was fun. 
very much appreciate your time and wisdom and getting to hear a little bit inside about, you know, your experiences. That's been a blast. So that's one thing you'll find is fans love to hear those experiences, right? That's, you have such a unique role and you touch so many lives in great ways that, you know, as a kid, I watched real Ghostbusters and I still can just hear your voice as Janine's voice when it comes on, you know, it's, yeah. you just think of, I can see the picture and what it sounds like when That's I what people say. And I find that so trippy. I mean, I yeah. just like, and sometimes on Twitter where I love that Laura on Twitter too. And um, sometimes they'll say, I'll say something as Janine, because sometimes for the fans, if they write, it, if they're like Ghostbuster fan, I just say something that Janine would say, you know, mm-hmm. and um, like there was just something recent and I just wrote back, uh, read him and weep. And they, they said, like, oh, I could hear you saying that. And of course, that was a line that um, Janine said. I remember a few. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but thank you. Thank you so much. That's very, very nice to hear it's very gratifying yeah. uh, to hear that and um if you ever have any questions about your uh voiceover auditioning or whatever you can or you know so you can yeah. send it to me and listen to it or whatever that'd be great sure um i don't know if you want to do us uh one last favor and um do us a little uh uh Janine voice and say something uh, along the lines of, um, hi, I'm Laura Summer, uh, Janine from Real Ghostbusters, and you're listening to the Frog Brothers podcast. Okay. Ready? Mm hmm. This is Laura Summer, the original Janine Melnitz on the Real Ghostbusters, and you're listening to the Frog Brothers podcast. Thank you. That was great. These boys are great. <laughs> <laughs> did I get, did I do my lines? You oh, that was yeah. great. That was great. It was great. It was great. Solid. One did it sound like Janine? Because I, oh, yeah. Second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I better get my laundry. Yeah. Go All ahead. right. Go well, ahead. thank you very much for your thank time. You. you have a great evening. You're very welcome. And I'll send I, you, you know, links about this one. Yeah. Anytime. Any mm-hmm. All right. Thank, thank you. you. If you want feedback or, you know, like something I could help you with, you yeah. know, give you a note or something like that. Sure. For sure. Okay. Bye. All right. Good, bye. Good night. Good night.